So, uh, hey, I am Zach Gage, and I was the systems designer on Tharsis. When Mike and I first talked about making this uh, game about space cannibalism, I was really excited about doing it and doing it with dice. Um, one of the big reasons I wanted to use dice and actual dice that you rolled was because I feel like there are a lot of really great roguelike style games uh, that have been out there, but a lot of those games are not very accessible because there's just these massive sprawling systems that are hidden underneath the surface. Um, but because roguelikes draw from Dungeons and Dragons, which is actually one of the more accessible games out there at its time, many of these games use dice under the table. Um, so when you attack a monster, you have a weapon that does 1d6 worth of damage and it has a, you know, 18 out of 20 chance to hit. Um, and so these games, they're all rolling dice all the time and a lot of them roll the dice and tell you what the results are in text. But many of them still feel very inaccessible because that's not a very understandable way to deal with dice. So I really wanted to make a game that kind of forefronted the dice and put them right out in front of you so that people could understand very easily what was happening and feel like that the game made a lot of sense to them and be able to kind of expose a lot of this complexity and give people this experience that they might not have previously had uh, because they might have been scared off by the complexity and text and, and uh, depth of these other games. So um, when we were first talking about doing dice games, I had to kind of do some research and think about how we wanted to deal with dice in Tharsis. One of the games that originally inspired me to want to start working with dice is King of Tokyo by Richard Garfield. King of Tokyo is really fantastic um, in that it's a Yahtzee style game uh, where everybody on their turn rolls a bunch of dice and the dice kind of give you a bunch of different options. And so between rolls, you kind of can decide which option you want to go for. And really, King of Tokyo fits in with a lot of the general wisdom on how to deal with dice games. And so a lot of what I'd heard at that time was this idea that if you're going to use dice in a game, the dice shouldn't actually tell you what happens. Instead, the dice should merely advise you as to what your possibilities are. And I think King of Tokyo does this really well. So if you roll a lot of energy on your dice, you start looking at the cards you could buy for energy. And you then maybe reroll your other dice to try to get more energy. If you roll a lot of points, you go for points. And if you roll a lot of attack, you tend to go for attack. So really the dice are very clearly kind of guiding what you're thinking. Another game that does this is Quantum by Eric Zimmerman, which is a sort of large scale galaxy attack defense game. Um, and in that game, your ships are dice. And so when you're going to deploy a new ship, you roll it and uh, that tells you what kind of ship it's going to be. And so the randomness is really just in affecting the options that you have in a similar way to when you draw a card out of a deck of cards um, and then you put it into your hand in magic. The randomness has affected your choices, but it hasn't actually told you whether or not that card is going to win or lose in whatever battle. Um, it's it's participating in so but the more time that I spent with dice I started to think maybe this wasn't totally accurate so I started looking at craps and thinking like why is craps so much fun to play why does craps which is totally about dice being an arbiter of your fate what makes that an enjoyable game and I think it's pretty easy to point out that the money is the thing that makes craps an enjoyable game but I think the money is a really um, you're kind of missing the point when you just look at the money because really what makes craps an interesting game is the tension and the weight that the money provides to the decisions that you're making and not really the fact that it's money itself. Um, and you can really see that in like if I was making a game and I said, OK, roll this die. If you, you know, it costs you 50 cents. And if you roll anything aside from a six, I will give you 70 cents. You could play it and it wouldn't really be that much fun because your stakes are low and the winning is low. And the more you rolled the die, the more you'd start to feel like it was arbitrary and that you didn't care. But if we played a game where I gave you a die and you paid me $200 and if you roll a six, I will give you $2,000, that would be a really intense, crazy interesting moment for you. That moment where you decide to to play the game or not play the game, that moment where you roll the die, that is going to be this tense, beautiful, excruciating moment for you. 
And that's the thing that I really wanted to put into Tharsis. Like, that's this intensity that dice can give you that feels valid when it happens. And the, the, you get to see the die roll and the, the number come up and you get to realize what actually that meant for you. That's the thing that I kind of really wanted to have in Tharsis. Not this, not, not the weird gamified version of dice where the dice are just giving you options, but the, the intense gambling version of dice where the dice are the arbiter of, of essentially your life. Um, and so designing Tharsis uh, was really about trying to figure out how to play that up. How do you give the player enough options so that when the dice roll bad, uh, you you can back out of it and, and think about what else you can do or um, design it in such a way so that the player really cares about the outcome of all of the dice. And really, that's what the structure of Tharsis is. The design is such that we want it to be... So you go into a room with an astronaut and you have a plan and you think, okay, you know, I know what how much work I need to do. I know that I need to roll a six so that I can heal the rest of my crew. That's what I'm going to do. And if there are some hazards, if I roll some twos, you know, maybe I'll take damage. But I hope that that will not happen. And I hope I can do this. And then you roll and either you get it or you don't. But you've decided before you go in exactly what you want those numbers to be. And then if you fail, you have a fallback plan and that fallback back plan is a little bit less likely to happen. And maybe that fallback plan is like, OK, well, now I need to send my astronaut with low health into this room where he could die. Um, but I hope that he doesn't like as long as I don't roll two threes, I'll be fine. And then you either roll two threes or you don't. And that tension builds over the course of the turn as you're going through these plans, as you're sending different astronauts to these places. Um, and it creates this situation where you really, really, really care about what those dice are going to turn up, turn up as. Um, and that that's like the really beautiful thing that I wanted to get into the game. I, I want, you know, I, I really want Tharsis to feel like playing with the tension of craps, the tension of gambling. Um, but the result is, you know, the loss or not loss uh, of lives of this virtual crew. And I'm pretty proud of how everybody kind of came together around that. And I think we kind of found a system where that works. 